Hi students! Welcome back again to another episode of Learning. And for today's video, pag-aaralan natin ang Geometric Mean. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood ang lesson bago ito, please check on the link in the video description. Ang lesson na yun ay all about geometric sequences. Let us recall the formula to find the nth term of a geometric sequence. We have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Wherein a sub n is the nth term or the last term, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the order of the term. Let's begin with the first example. Insert 3 geometric means between 3 and 48. Since we are going to insert 3 geometric means, then we will have 5 terms. Wherein the first term is 3, we have 1, 2, 3 geometric means, and the last term is 48. Okay, so a sub 1 is equal to 3. A sub 5, the last term is equal to 48. N is equal to 5 dahil mayroon tayong limang terms. And the target natin is to solve for the common ratio. To solve for the common ratio, we will use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Substitute lang natin yung given. So we have 48 is equal to 3 times r raised to 5 minus 1 kasi ang n natin is 5. And then divide both sides by 3. Cancel yung 3 rito. So 48 divided by 3 is equal to 16. We have here r to the 4th. Ngayon, para masold natin yung r, kailangan nating erase both sides sa reciprocal ng 4. Okay? Ang reciprocal ng 4 is 1 fourth. Erase din natin yung 16 sa 1 fourth. So we will have 16 raised to 1 over 4 is equal to r na lang. Dahil 4 times 1 fourth, imumultiply kasi natin ang exponent using the power of a power. Okay? So, kapag na-press nyo sa calculator nyo itong 16 raised to 1 over 4, ilanskip nyo lang siya, i-press yung 16, and then yung exponent function na x raised to y, ganyan yung symbol niya, or yung ganito, at pindutin yung 1 divided by 4, and then i-close yung parenthesis. Okay? So, ang magiging sagot lamang niya na isa sa calculator. We have 2 is equal to r. Pero, dalawa dapat ang solution ng ating r. Meron din tayong r is equal to negative 2. Bakit tayo nagkaroon ng dalawang solution? Kasi nga, kapag ang exponent ng variable ay even, magkakaroon tayo ng positive at negative na solution. Okay? Pero kapag ang exponent ng variable ay add, isa lang ang magiging solution. Paano nangyari yan? Kapag ginamit natin yung 2 as a factor 4 times, so we have... Uh, 2 raised to 4, that is r to the 4th, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. Kapag na-multiply din natin itong negative 2 sa kanyang sarili, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, ang sagot pa rin niyan is positive 16. Okay? Ngayon, magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang set ng sagot. Okay? Dahil may dalawa tayong set ng sequence. Using r is equal to 2, Ang susunod na term dito sa 3 is 6. Sunod sa 6 ay 12. Just multiply. And then 12 times 2 is equal to 24. Kapag na-times natin to sa 2, ang sagot ay 48. That means, sakto rin siya. Pero kapag ginamit natin yung negative 2, we have 3. Ang kasunod niya is negative 6. Dahil 3 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. Ang kasunod niya ay 12. Next is negative 24. And the last term is 48. As you can see, kapag ginamit natin yung dalawang common ratio, magiging sakto siya dun sa ating last term which is equal to 48. Therefore, ang ating three geometric means ay 6, 12, and 24 or negative 6, 12, and negative 24. Let's have the next example. If four geometric means are to be inserted between 250 and 2 over 25, what are the second and third means to be inserted? Based on the given, we have 250 as the first term, and then we are going to insert four. So we have one, two, three, four, and the last term would be 2 over 25. 
Okay, so we have a sub 1 is equal to 150. Ngayon, pang ilan ang ating 200 or yung 2 over 25? So, ang 2 over 25 ay ika-anim na term or a sub 6. So, 2 over 25. And then, n is equal to 6. Okay, dahil mag insert tayo ng 4. So, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 terms. Ang goal natin ay masolve yung ating common ratio. Okay? So, paano natin isosolve yung common ratio? Gagamitin natin ang formula na a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Okay? So, by substitution, ang ating last term ay 2 over 25 is equal to a sub 1 which is 250 times r raised to n minus 1. So, 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So, daidiretso ko na siya. And then, i-divide natin both sides by 250. Okay? Or, i-multiply natin all the terms or both sides by 1 over 250. Ngayon, sir, bakit po tayo nag-multiply ng 1 over 250? Pareho lamang siya kung i-divide natin both sides by 250. Okay? Bakit ko siya na-times na lang sa 1 over 250? Dahil meron tayong fraction dito sa left side. Okay? So, magiging 2 over 25 times 250 na lang siya. Okay? Kasi 2 times 1 is equal to 2 and then 25 times 250, hindi ko siya na-multiply. Okay? Is equal to, makakancel na yung 250 dahil 250 times 1 over 250 is equal to 1, magiging R to the 5th na lang ito. Okay? Next, we have to cancel 2 and 250, pareho silang divisible sa 2, magiging 1 over 25 times kalahati ng 250 is 125. Okay? Is equal to R to the 5th. Ngayon, ang 25 at 125 ay pwede nating i-express to base 5. Okay? Or pwede nyo rin siyang i-multiply. So, mas madali ay erase natin siya Sa, or i-express natin siya into exponential form to base 5. So, 25 is equal to 5 square times ang 125 ay 5 cube is equal to r to the fifth. Okay? And then, 1 over 5 square times 5 cube, i-apply natin yung loss of exponent. Kailangan natin i-add yung 2 at saka 3. So, magiging 1 over 5 to the fifth power is equal to r to the fifth. Okay? And then, erase natin both sides sa 1 over 5, raised to 1 over 5. Yung 1 raised to 1 over 5, kahit anong exponent niya, ang sagot pa rin ay 1 over 5 raised to 5 times 1 over 5. So, yung 5, it, i, uh, yung 5 raised to 5, i-raise natin sa 1 fifth. Kailangan lang natin i-times yung exponent na 5 sa 1 fifth. So, magiging 5 na lang siya or 5 raised to 1. Tinanggal ko na ang 1 is equal to r to the 5th. So, magiging 5 times 1 fifth magiging r raised to 1 na lang siya. So, therefore, ang ating common ratio ay 1 over 5 or 1 fifth. Ngayon, ang hinahanap natin is the second and third mean. Ang second, ang first mean natin ay ito, second ay ito, third and then fourth. So, ito yung ating hinahanap. Paano natin sila isosolve? So, 250 times na muna natin sa 1 fifth. So, that this is equal to 50. Next, yung 50 times natin sa 1 fifth, magiging 10. Next, yung 10 times natin sa 1 fifth, magiging 2. At yung 2, kapag na-times natin sa 1 fifth, ay magiging 2 over 5. So, therefore, ang ating second mean ay 10, at ang ating third mean ay Okay? Example number 3. What are the geometric means between 7 and 789? So, dahil mag insert tayo ng uh, dalawang geometric means sa pagitan ng 7 at 189, a sub 1 is equal to 7, and then we have 1, 2, fourth term natin ang 189. Okay? So, a sub 1 is equal to 7, a sub 4 is equal to 189, then n is equal to 4. Again, ang goal natin dito is masolve yung common ratio. 
So, para ma-solve siya, isa-substitute natin sila sa formula. So, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Ang ating last term ay 189 is equal to 7 times the common ratio. Wala pa, hinahanap natin siya. And then, n is 4 minus 1. Okay? Divide both sides by 7. Cancel yung 7 sa right side. And then, 189 divided by 7 is equal to 27. Is equal to r to the third power. Kasi 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. And then, erase natin siya sa 1 third. Okay? So, erase natin sila sa 1 third. Magiging 27 raised to 1 third is equal to r na lang. Okay? Dahil 3 times 1 third is equal to 1. Hindi na natin ilalagay yung 1. And then, i-press na lang sa calculator. Sa inyong, cal sa inyong cellphone, kung may calculator kayo sa cellphone at i-landscape nyo siya. So, 27 x raised to y and then, naka-enclose siya sa parenthesis, we have 1 and then, i-divide nyo siya sa 3. Ang magiging sagot ay 3. Therefore, ang ating common ratio ay 3. Okay? So, para makuha yung dalawang geometric means, kailangan natin i-multiply ang 7 sa 3. Okay? Which is 21. This is the uh, first geometric mean or the second term of the sequence. And then, 21 times 3 is equal to 63. Kapag na-multiply natin ang 63 sa 3, makukuha natin sagot is 180. 9. Since sumakto siya sa ating last term, ibig sabihin tama ang ating sagot. Next, let's have example number 4. What is the geometric mean between 25 and 9? Since we are going to insert only one geometric mean, then we have three terms. Okay, so the first term here is 25, and then we are going to insert one geometric mean. The last term or the third term is 9. So, a sub 1 is equal to 25. a sub 3, the last term is equal to 9. n is equal to 3. And then, we are going to solve for r. So, to solve for r, we will use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Just substitute this into the formula. So, ang ating last term ay 9. That is a sub 3 or a sub n is equal to a sub 1 which is 25 and then solve for r raised to uh, 3 which is n minus 1. Okay? And then divide both sides by 25. So, wala naman common factor yung 9 at saka 25. So, cancelin lang natin tong 25. And then we have 9 over 25 is equal to r raised to 3 minus 1 is r square. So, as you can see, even ang ating exponent dito, kaya magiging dalawa ang solution natin para sa r. Isang positive at isang negative. So, erase natin both sides by 1 half or get the square root. So, raised to 1 half. So, kapag nag-raise ka sa 1 half, that is just the same as getting the square root. Okay, so square root of 9 is equal to 3 and square root of 25 is equal to 5. Or kung gusto nyo i-calculator siya, pindutin nyo yung 9 and then uh, x raised to y na exponent function and then 1 divided by 2 at saka yung 25. Ganun din yung gagawin nyo sa kanya. Okay, 1 divided by 2. So makukuha nyo pa rin dyan is 3 fifth. That is the value of r. And since ito ay even, so r is equal to uh, negative 3 fifths as well. Okay? So, meron tayong dalawang value ng geometric mean na ito. Okay? Isang positive at isang negative. So, yung una ay imumultiply natin sa 3 fifths. So, 25 times 3 fifths. Uh, 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. And then, times 3 is equal to 15. At kapag na-multiply natin yung 25 sa negative 3 fifths, ang magiging sagot is negative 15. Therefore, the geometric mean between 25 and 9 is positive 15 or negative 15.